This episode contains spoilers for the musical. By the way, you'll get life or death plot spoilers just by listening to music from the Hamilton soundtrack. Hello, everyone. And welcome to Dad and Me Love, love history. history. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. We could be the greatest team that the world has ever seen. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. So today, we're looking at the American Revolution and asking the question, does the Hamilton musical get its history right? We're looking at America becoming independent from Britain and setting itself up as a new nation. Hamilton the musical is a global sensation. The American Revolution lasted from 1765 to 1783 and Alexander Hamilton played a major role in creating this new nation. These American revolutionaries wanted a free society, a place where the people could choose the government and where the government would help the people to make money, set up businesses. They wanted their own government to have their own taxes and their own American bank. They didn't want to have to pay taxes to another country, which is what they had to do when Britain was in charge. And a guy called Alexander Hamilton made all that happen. Today, America is known for its successful business ideas and inventions. From iPhones to Tesla, America is the world leader and is the richest nation in the world. So you could say Alexander Hamilton's plans worked. The stage show Hamilton the Musical came out in 2016 and won more awards than any other musical. The Tony Awards are America's main theatre awards. Hamilton was nominated for 16 and won 11. A filming of Hamilton in a theatre is now on Disney+. Plus, But during Covid, the theatre shows had to be shut down in America and Britain. So the world's favourite new musical couldn't perform anywhere in the world. Until now, Hamilton just opened in Sydney's Lyric Theatre and next week we are going to see it. Yay! Yep, the only place in the world where you can see Hamilton right now is just down the road from where we live. Well, nine hours drive down the road. So, apart from being about a key part of American history, the American Revolution, what makes the musical so special, James? It has has lots of music about his life, and it, it's not all like, it's not, most of it is an opera. It has mostly like rap and hip hop music, so it's like good for, for older kids because it also says a lot of bad words as well. Yeah, we should uh, yeah warn you about that one. Parents, be aware that the soundtrack includes some mature themes and language, so be careful to see it if you can handle it. The film of the show is M- rated M on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, so it's a hip-hop musical, very modern uh, in musical style and I know if you've not seen it it sounds like it wouldn't work right it's set 250 years ago I like it as a history teacher because it covers so much interesting history and I like it as a writer because the writing is so clever and rap is such a fast way of getting a lot of words across Hamilton is two and a half hours long and in about two and a half hours most musicals would cover about 10,000 words which would include songs and normal talking speech at times. Hamilton is 99% songs, hardly any talking, and it crams 24,000 words into two and a half hours. That's clever because it means you learn more than twice as much history and you get twice as many laughs, there are lots of jokes, as uh, compared to a, a regular musical. Why did the British cross the Atlantic? I don't know. Why did the British cross the Atlantic? To get to the other tide. (laughs) We love, we love history. We love history, baby. We love, we 
love history. So who was Alexander Hamilton? And the world's gonna know your name. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. He was one of what we call the Founding Fathers, one of the leaders who led Britain's American colonies to rebel against the British King. And uh, Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton, founded and set up, or helped set up, the, the new country of the USA, once the War of Independence had been won against Britain. This was all the more impressive because he was an orphan who wasn't even brought up in America. He came from the Caribbean. His Scottish father abandoned his family, Alexander's mum was half British and half French, but she got yellow fever and died when Alexander was about 10 years old. He was a very clever boy who learned a lot from reading a lot of good books. Soon Alexander began working for a trading company that shipped goods between the Caribbean and New York. The boss thought Alexander was so clever that he put this, the boy in charge of the company while the boss sailed away on a five month trip. Then, after a hurricane hit the little island that he lived on in the Caribbean, Alexander wrote such a brilliant letter about the events that it got published in a magazine as a wonderful piece of writing. And it was written by a then 15 year old. The people on his little island knew Alexander wanted to go somewhere where he could get education at a top college. So they got together and paid for his voyage to America. He arrived in New York at 15 years old, did brilliantly well at college, and became the most trusted advisor to General George Washington. So he helped, Alexander helped George Washington uh, in their war of independence against Britain. And Washington, of course, became the first president of the United States after that war was won by the Americans. Later, Hamilton was put in charge of the economy. Anything and everything to do with finances, money, taxes, banks, business was under his control, as the musical tells us, shows us. He set up the financial system. After Hamilton did all that, America was able to become this growing economy. It could and did become the richest and most powerful nation in the world. America is known for being not just a world leader of democracy, but also for what's called capitalism which kind of means where people are encouraged to make money. They can set up businesses, borrow money from banks to build those businesses, and then pay taxes to the government when they, they sell their products. They got, they're making money and they pay some of it back to the government. And of course that helps the government to run the country. All of that was organized by Alexander Hamilton after the US became independent. Hamilton even set up the Coast Guard to protect America's coastline. Hamilton was a war hero, and nobody wrote more. And that might not sound like much, but writing is important. The American Revolution happened because writers, especially Hamilton, used their pens to persuade ordinary people to support the revolution. And all of that is shown in the musical. What did King George think of the American colonists? I don't know. What did King George think of the American colonists? He thought they were revolting. <laughs> <laughs> and they were. <laughs> the white people who lived in America originally came from Europe, especially Britain, and were known as the colonists because they lived in colonies in America which were owned by Britain, only because Britain had taken the land from Native Americans. When Britain ruled these colonies, each colony had its own area of land. States, you'd later call them. So each colony had its own rules. So that's why we see in Hamilton the musical that it is legal to fight a duel in the colony of New York. But it is allowed in its neighbour, New Jersey. Where is this happening? Across the river in Jersey. Everything is legal in New Jersey. So first, Hamilton's son took a boat from New York to Jersey to fight in a duel there. And years later, Hamilton did the same thing. These colony states like New York and New Jersey and Virginia and so on were working together and, and led by army leader George Washington with Hamilton helping him as his right hand man. They would defeat Britain together, gain independence for America and those colonies would unite together. 
Can you think of a good name those states in America could give themselves once they united together? Yes, but first, these colonies in America wanted to choose their own leaders and stop paying for taxes back to Britain. These American colonies wanted to unite together and set up their new country. They wanted to call themselves the United States of America. Ta da! It may seem strange that democracy didn't really exist anywhere in the world until then, but even in the new USA, women would not be allowed to vote and slavery still existed. Even though it was less than half the population that could vote, this was still a lot more than could vote in Britain or anywhere else in the world at this time. So this country that the American colonists created was leading much of the world into democracy, and the USA is the world's longest running democracy today. Over time, slavery would end, women would get the vote, and people of colour would also get to vote. In the time of Alexander Hamilton, they were getting a new nation started, but only once they'd fought a war against Britain. More than anyone else, Hamilton wrote up and spread ideas about what this new nation could look like and how it could be organised. Before TV and the internet, writing persuasively was the way to get ideas noticed, and it's still pretty useful today. Hamilton got more and more followers to join in and support the American Revolution. Hamilton made a clear argument that it made no sense for a small island thousands of miles away, meaning Britain, to be the boss of America and to take America's money through taxes. Britain even taxed Americans for buying British tea, and Americans weren't allowed to buy tea from any other country. So Hamilton's main weapon was his pen. James, you did some persuasive writing uh, recently that you brought home from school and you read it to me. What were you trying to persuade me and mum to do? To get me a dog. And I gotta say, before that time, me and his mum were not taking that idea even remotely seriously, but he made it into a serious argument, giving reasons why it made sense. And now, we're thinking about it. <sighs> <laughs> oh. So Hamilton is a musical where hip-hop artists rap about not only things like the love story between Alexander Hamilton and the woman he would marry, Eliza, but also the details of war tactics and key government meetings. The lyrics and the words of the rhymes in the musical often quote real speeches that were real historical documents today, essays and letters that come from that time of the American Revolution that we have as primary sources today. So Lin-Manuel Miranda, the creator of Hamilton the Musical, dug into those sources and actually uses the words from them in a lot of the rap songs that he's written. So I'm, gonna, I'm picking out one example of a, a song from the musical here. It's a song called Yorktown, about the Battle of Yorktown, which turned out to be the final major battle of the war between the Americans and Britain. In the song, Hamilton says... Take the bullets out of your gun, we move undercover and we move as one. Through the night, we have one shot to live another day. We cannot let a stray gunshot give us away. So he said take the bullets out of your gun. And this is as Hamilton was leading troops towards a British fortress. But before they set off, this is moving at night so they can't be seen, Hamilton really did make his soldiers remove all of the bullets from their guns so that when they crept through the night to get into position for their surprise attack, no one's gun would accidentally fire, making the loud noise, of course, that it would with a bullet inside. But if we're talking about historical accuracy, we can't be sure how much it was Hamilton who gave this order, but he was there at the time and he did make his men do it, or whether it was Washington who beforehand had given that command to take your bullets out your gun. Hamilton succeeded in leading his men to take over that fortress and the British retreated and the British soldiers were heard singing a song called The World Turned Upside Down. What had happened didn't make sense because this bunch of rebels was beating the world superpower, Britain. And as our fallen foes retreat, I hear the drinking song they're singing. What did the visitors say as he left the Statue of Liberty? 
I don't know. What did the visitor say as he left the Statue of Liberty? Keeping torch. So we've heard a lot today about Hamilton and the American Revolution, but not enough for us to make a conclusion about how accurate the musical is. Not yet. So although that's about it for this episode, we'll be bringing you part two on Hamilton and the American Revolution after we've been to see the show. So tell everyone you know, adults and kids. Yeah, please share our podcast on social media and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. And tell us what you think on Facebook. And Instagram. And Twitter. Bye for now. From Dad. And me. Love Love History. History. Here are some questions to see how well you understood today's episode. Number one, what does democracy mean? Number two, who could not vote in the USA when it was first founded? Number three, what does capitalism mean? Number four, who was king of Britain at this time? Number five, why did the Americans want to be free from the British rule? And finally, question six, why was persuasive writing so important for Alexander Hamilton? Dad and me love a whole lot of history. We could be the greatest team that the world has ever seen. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Neymar, you're always trying to get attention, aren't you, on air? Later, Hamilton, Neymar, (laughs) it's our cat, one of them. Hello, and I'm Mr. Sleepyhead. Are you really sleepy? No. No. <laughs> mm. oh, okay, wake me up with some jokes, James. What did King George think of the American colonialists? I don't know. What did King George think of the American colonists? He thought they were revoluting. No, I don't know how Let's to do Let's do the whole joke again. Okay. What did King George think of the American... Uh, how do you say that? Colonists. He was a... <laughs> <laughs> Babies. What protest by a group of dogs occurred in 1773? I don't know. What protest by a group of dogs did occur in 1783? No, 73. Did occur in 1773? In America. In America. The Boston Flea Party. The Boston Flea Party, not the Boston Tea Party. Why did the British cross the Atlantic? I don't know. Why did the British cross the Atlantic? To get to the other tide. To get to the other tide. What's red, white, blue and almost as ugly as a dog? I don't know. What's red, white and blue and almost as ugly as a dog? A revolutionary warthog. A a revolutionary warthog. I don't get it. So that's what the colours of America are. Yeah. And what's as ugly as a dog or warthog. Okay, it's as simple as that. I thought there was be something else. What did the visitors say as he left the Statue of Liberty? 
I don't know. What did the visitor say as he left the Statue of Liberty? Keeping torch. Keeping torch. I'll keep in touch. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a difficult audience. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm so embarrassing. <laughs>